Okay, it's seven o'clock. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for taking the time to join the meeting tonight. Uh, the basic agenda for this meeting is going to be the introduction and presentation that Kyle is going to make, followed by questions of residents alphabetically by last name. Um, I just want to remind you to please be courteous and keep your questions short and concise because we have quite a few people to go through. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity. And keep your sound on mute until it's your turn to speak. So thank you very much in advance for that. So um, I would like to introduce Kyle Rapier of Rapier and Bowling Law Firm, which is located in Hamilton, Ohio. Kyle is going to share his expertise on the importance of bylaws, the risks associated with not having bylaws and the cost to incorporate bylaws for association. And I also wanted to mention that everyone's welcome to stay on the call after uh, Kyle logs off. Um, if you'd like to continue with a group just discussion. So that's, you know, totally, man, um, you know, your choice if you want to do that. Okay, Kyle, you have the floor. Okay, um, so I, I've spoke uh, with some individual uh, members. I, I understand that I'm speaking to a group now, but when I looked at our association's um, covenants and restrictions or how we run the association, uh, the first thing that I noticed was um, these documents were recorded back in 1988. Uh, and since then, the statute has changed. <clears throat> the old method was that corporations are not-for-profit corporations that made up private homeowner associations, uh, just had a set of governing rules. Usually they were subdivision rules, and we didn't really see the bylaws being recorded. Uh, the statute in Ohio changed. Um, the most effective uh, date of the statute is 2010. Uh, there was a house bill that changed some of the way that we govern established planned communities. Uh, so for everyone's reference, what I'm talking about is Ohio Revised Code 5312. If it's not a condominium we're, and we're talking about a planned unit development or subdivision with rules and regulations, we're talking about Ohio Revised Code 5312. Um, that statute is fairly new, um, 2010, and since the adoption of that, that statute, uh, planned communities and homeowners associations that are being developed currently, they have their bylaws recorded with their declaration. Often I see it recorded as an exhibit to the declaration itself. <clears throat> When we say bylaws, we're talking about the way the corporation, which is a not-for-profit uh, entity, the way that we run that entity. So what we're talking about is the board of directors. Uh, sometimes uh, the terminology is a little interchangeable, but I'm used to calling it a board of directors. Um, how many an association will have? Some have as few as three. I have others that have up to seven. A good average is about five members. Typically, you'll hear the term president, treasurer, and secretary. Sometimes you'll hear vice president, and sometimes you'll hear a member at large. Okay. But the bylaws in general determine only how board uh, members are elected. When you have your annual meeting, you should at least have one meeting a year uh, of your association. And um, for how long a board member will uh, serve, uh, a typical is a, a two year term. I've seen some that are as short as one year and then others will go as long as three years. When I look at our um, restrictive covenants, what we have uh, are recorded restrictive covenants establishing what I would call an association and we don't have the, the bylaws. My suggestion was um, circulate some proposed bylaws, have an annual election, uh, elect some board members, and then get back on track. And, and uh, after you adopt the bylaws within the community itself, come to an attorney, whether it be me or any other attorney in Butler County, and have your bylaws recorded of record. And then that's how you're always gonna run your association. I think the problem and the confusion right now is um, who is the board, uh, how, how long is their term, when does their term end, how do you conduct elections, and, and there's just nothing of record that I could find um, uh, within this association. 
One thing that uh, I noticed was this, the, the bylaws or the restrictive covenants is what it's called of record that I, I reviewed. It's very um, short and concise. It's very clear that um, there's small association fees. The association fees are collected for the benefit of <clears throat> maintaining the community and some of the restrictions, but more importantly, there's a, um, there's a, a roadway, a common roadway that I understand is not dedicated, not a municipality responsibility, it's responsibility of all the owners. And how, uh, it, how do we determine on what schedule that is repaired uh, or maintained? That's typically what your uh, community board of uh, members, um, your bylaws would establish, and then they would determine using the business judgment rule, how often or what methods are going to be implemented to repair. Um, recording the bylaws uh, and keep me on agenda. If I'm missing a topic, I'm trying to cover everything. Just let me know if I miss something. Uh, how expensive is recording the bylaws in and of themselves? Um, I, I gave some sample bylaws uh, to be shared with the other members of the community. Um, I did that in good faith. Uh, you as uh, members of the community can adopt whatever uh, bylaws you feel are suitable to the association. So there's no cost in what I've already shared. Um, recording them in and of themselves <clears throat> would cost, uh, the recorder's office charges $34 for the first two pages of any document we record. They charge $8 for each additional page. So roughly $150, $200, depending on the length of our exhibits and depending on the length of, of the um, bylaws themselves. And, and I honestly, I, I've got a copy of your bylaws. I don't know how many pages, were they five or six pages? in general, uh, that the proposed bylaws are the ones that we were looking at. So um, yes, that's correct. Not a very, it's not very expensive to record bylaws is what I'm saying. Uh, 100, $100, $150 um, and, and they can be recorded. Um, why is it important? I think the question is why, why would an association want to record the bylaws? Well, in situations as what, what we find ourselves in currently, I think we have a relatively small association that um, there's no clear direction as to when elections are to be held, who the board members are, uh, what percentage of vote, um, and what the terms are. It's to clarify that, but let's say that we don't have our recorded bylaws. The statute, and the one that I'm referring to is 5312.02. That's a very precise citation. It indicates that an association lacks the authority <clears throat> to file legal action or take any official legal action unless you have recorded bylaws. Statute says that nothing, you know, the government can't force you to record the bylaws, but if you fail to have those, what it essentially means is we couldn't go into court um, as an association entity and, and file any type of litigation. So if we have covenants and restrictions, which we do, we don't have bylaws, then officially we can't take um, legal action until we have that. What options are available then? Well, the option available, and it's not a good one, but I'm just telling you under the law, what we have is, a, is what's called a receivership. <clears throat> so if the association fails and the members fail to govern themselves, um, fail to take the necessary methods to effectively govern themselves and, and the responsibilities of maintenance and repair of all the common elements, um, then any member, any single member or group of members could file for a receiver to be put in place to run the association. Why is that not a good option? Typically receivership actions in and of themselves are, are costly. That cost would be shared be, uh, between all of the members. And it doesn't make good sense to me that for the members we should vote and run the association according to what the wishes of the members are. Um, why pay someone else to do it? But that is the 
the last method or that any anyone could take is to get a uh, ask the court to appoint a receiver and the receiver typically <clears throat> is either an attorney or represented by an attorney and they charge um, fairly stiff hourly rates 250 300 dollars an hour to run the association that i think that the members are completely capable of running um, especially a small association. I, I represent uh, many associations in Kentucky and Ohio, and some of my larger ones are 600, 700 homes. Sometimes that, that becomes difficult because we have so many homeowners, and oftentimes we have a management company that assists in running that. <clears throat> Smaller associations, I have all kinds that self-manage and run themselves, and it effectively keeps the cost down. You're not paying some other person to do a task that we have plenty of hopefully able-bodied people to perform and the only task in our association are have an annual meeting collect assessments um, pay for repair of the common elements and expenses and bills on an as-needed basis um, it's not a this is not a condominium association which typically has much more larger issues to deal with uh, we're a homeowner association we we just have a few common areas. I think the biggest is the common roadway that needs to be addressed. Did I, that was a long speech as to, to my thoughts, but um, did I miss anything on your agenda? And then I, I'd like to just allow a lot of the members to ask me question, pointed yep, questions. That, that sounds great, Kyle. That was uh, very well done. Thank you. And I think we're going to go ahead and start with the questions and we'll start um, with the A's, which is Arnold. So Arnold, go ahead and uh, present your... Can you hear us? Yes. Oh, okay, great, great. Well, you answered part of my question. Um, the other part is last year, we passed a $3,000 assessment for repair and repaving of the lane. Does that still apply? My, my opinion, and it's a cautious one, is, is I don't think so, because if we were to take action to enforce that, one of the problems we have is we don't have recorded bylaws. So as soon as we would file in a court of law to enforce that against any owners that felt that it was not done validly, would argue that we lack standing um, as an association because we are an association, we're called a de facto association, but we don't have recorded bylaws, therefore we lack the standing to bring the litigation. So my, my opinion was, let's just start at the beginning and uh, record the bylaws. You may take a new vote. Uh, or you may ask the members to reaffirm the vote uh, approving uh, the maintenance assessment. But uh, where I kept running into is we, we, I can't find any recorded bylaws and that's a requirement under the statute. So I, I think I lack the authority to enforce what was passed through a, um, through a court action. Now, I'll, I'll give you another, another remedy, okay? Um, <clears throat> anyone could, could ask a receiver to be appointed and for the receiver to take the action that was voted on by my understanding, a majority of the members and enforce it. Once a receiver is appointed, the receiver can run the association how he sees fit um, without contribution or input from the members. Because at that point, he is in control by court authority. Receiverships don't last into perpetuity. Uh, they're usually, uh, they. Uh, one I dealt with in Hamilton County went on for I believe six months and then the court readdressed and seen if that receivership needed to continue. It did continued for another six months until it was wrapped up and then the association started self-managing. So do I think that it was illegal? But illegal uh, I think that it was done properly, 100%. It sounds like it was. I just think that uh, I lack the ability if I was brought in as the attorney for the association to enforce it because I don't have bylaws. Okay. This is um, Jeannie Arnold. Um, so Hi, with, with um, that process, did that cost the homeowners more money that somebody took it into receivership or somebody filed? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you the case. It's down in Hamilton County. It's called Dina Towers and it costs the, the members a lot of money. Um, uh, Different situation. I don't want to scare anybody with numbers, but in that, that I think the numbers were sixty, seventy thousand in receivership fees. Totally different association. That was is more like a, a condom. It, it looked like an apartment complex, but they ran under a condominium regime, and 
Um, there was a lot of mess and problems, but I just see how much it costs to get a receivership even started. And it doesn't uh -huh. make good, good sense here. But if, if we have no other option, if you members have no other option, any single person as a member, as a record owner, has the right to ask for a receivership. And the, in layman's terms, you're basically telling the court, we have these articles. These articles are for how we run the association. We need a repair done and the repair is not happening. Therefore, we need a receivership to be appointed because we don't have recorded bylaws and we don't have enough structure to bring the community together and adopt bylaws. Okay. And I think that probably the court, any judge hearing this would say, yeah, I'm going to appoint a receivership for six months. He's going to run the association. And then once the members like would like to take a vote and adopt bylaws and reorganize, then I'll end the receivership at that time. By the time six months goes by, we paid a receiver for no, in my opinion, no reason. Okay. okay. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I don't have any any questions. I have had all of my answered. So the next in line is uh, Linda Cassicelli. Linda, do you have any questions? You're on mute, Linda. We can we can come back around to you. Sure. Oh, sorry, Deb Brummett, you are a B. I skipped right by you. Sorry. Do you have any questions? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. No, I don't have any either right now. Okay. 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 So who else do we have? Um, who's next? Let me look here. Uh, Gentry looks like Gentry. You're next. Any questions from the Gentries? You're muted. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Okay, next would be Harmeyer. I do have a number of questions. Um, so currently, um, and, and Kyle, I was one of the people that uh, spoke with you on the phone call back uh, in the fall. Okay. And so for this uh, period of time since our call, uh, the group of, of the three ladies, Lisa, um, myself, along with Deb Brummett, who is the elected treasurer, formed a de facto group uh, per your suggestion. And yep. so we have been operating under the mode of um, Lisa being secretary and um, I'm just calling myself a member at large. Um, sure. I mean, I could be a de facto president, but uh, whatever. So um, we've been treating it that way. And we have been, uh, we, we spent several months taking uh, your example bylaws as, and as well as other samples that were out there mm -hmm. and working on it. Um, and our goal was uh, to present, which we did, um, was that last week we had a, a group meeting prior to that meeting we had sent out an email to residents um, explaining that we were going to ho hold this meeting to talk about bylaws followed by a vote mm -hmm. also following the vote i sent out a google document um, giving authorship to all of the residents if they had any specific comments they wanted to address and i did hear back from one resident um, who had some comments so we're in the process of a vote, but the question is, I guess my first question, um, because we have since thought about drafting some of that language and because we have not yet heard back from everyone because we're holding this meeting, <laughs> all these becauses, do we continue with this ballot or would you suggest that we start anew and do you have a recommended approach for giving everybody a voice because I didn't get feedback and I know that there's confusion. People are not understanding and I, and I get it. We all understand that. Um, people My, are busy in their lives. They don't, they don't want to yeah. take time out. They're, they're worried, they're scared, they're this, they're that. And we're simply trying to 
um, again, start from ground zero because we have had issues. Yep. We, we do right now, we, we have problems, we need help. Well, let, let's start at the beginning. And um, so have you done anything uh, illegal or incorrect? Absolutely not. <clears throat> even, even if you had a validly established board and you had bylaws um, and everything was fine, I've had some communities where we might have a rogue board that will not run the association according to the declaration and bylaws. So what are the members to do at that point in time? Well, the membership has the power, um, just like how uh, our nation runs, the power is, is vested with the people. It's not in the, the individual that has been elected and uh, will not give up power. So what I'm saying is at any point in time, <clears throat> I would say uh, you could have a petition signed by as many people willing to sign it, the more the better, setting a community meeting to discuss the bylaws, and then secondarily setting another date that's after the discussion to adopt the bylaws. And if you have a supermajority of the association, in my mind, 75% um, would be, or more would be what I would shoot for in some cases, two thirds vote. If the membership votes, regardless of the board that claims that they are the board in power, <clears throat> regardless of them calling the meeting themselves, the membership has called the meeting and the membership uh, has adopted the bylaws. So what I'm saying is as long as you have enough people um, and we send out notice, I, I prefer notice through certified mail, um, notice through regular mail is fine as long as we have proof of mailing. <clears throat> the members themselves can adopt the bylaws um, at a, a duly noticed meeting of the members. That's what I would suggest. I think you've already started the, the ball rolling. You haven't done anything improper. Um, kind of gave notice to the community, but why not set an, another date in the near future um, for people to show up to ask questions? We're doing it here. We're doing it by Zoom, but if need be, I can appear um, at a live meeting. We just need to do it in compliance with Governor DeWine's current orders and Perhaps we do it in an open space uh, rather than an enclosed um, space. Well, that would, be, that would be step one um, is to have a meetings for questions and answers of all members. Step two would be to have an official uh, vote of the community. And I like to do that two ways. You have a live vote. You also send proxy ballots and, or mail-in ballots to everyone in the community. Um, so if they can't attend the live meeting and vote, they can mail a ballot in approving or not approving the proposed bylaws or giving their vote to a neighbor and assigning their vote to a neighbor. So that, that's my suggestions. Okay. Um, so you'll have to forgive me because I have a number of questions. Uh, that's okay. So, sorry, folks. Um, but I guess part of that um, that places us in somewhat of an, and people have heard me talk about this chicken and egg thing, horse in, horse in the cart thing. We've got a road that's um, in dangerous states and areas. Um, and so logically we would be making calls right now to get the road fixed. So as part of our internal process, <clears throat> the de facto group, we have determined that the, you know, we're suggesting in our draft bylaws that we have a new configuration um, of a three member board. Um, and in addition, in addition to that, trustees, two trustees following number 13, which is um, in our covenant um, that the trustees would oversee the process for gathering the bids, et cetera, et cetera. Now I can tell you that part of, um, what went down in the fall without revisiting all of that mess, there was confusion about the definition of trustee and there still is to this day. Um, and in the case of, of our previous configuration or maybe still current because I'm not sure where we are right now, we need help with that as well, defining that. Um, but our president and VP served as those trustees 
And um, a number of us, including myself, who was secretary, had forgotten about the fact that we voted them in as trustees in 2018. So there's just a series of misunderstandings and things that, that led us to a point of just um, demise, total demise. Sure. And so not to repeat that same mistake, I have been just dedicated to the notion that we're gonna do it right this time. Mm -hmm. Without all this fist fighting and everything. Um, so again, back to bylaws and the need to get the road fixed. How can we do this? And how can we do this in the weeks ahead so that we're not um, facing danger with this road? I'm worried that somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. because it's in such bad shape so so the trustees is, is old language let me start there okay um trust the trustee as i read uh the older language could have been the president or it could have been individual uh, other members of the community that were appointed by the board the trustee is just a physical person committee a committee is sometimes used in the newer language um <clears throat> the other section that you cite to that that's what I was in fear of is if you tried to push forward with the vote and a trustee would bring um, litigation on behalf of the association. And, and it says a judgment may include court costs and attorney's fees expended. The problem that we have is we have a new statute in Ohio and we don't have reported bylaws. So <clears throat> I think that your first step is just to, to get the community to adopt uh, bylaws to have elect an election, whether it's the previous board or a new board, makes no difference. We just really need to establish board members. What are their terms? How long are they going to serve? When is their seat up for new election? And that's the problem. We, we don't have that established uh, of record right now. Um, soon as we have our recorded bylaws and we have our board in place. That's when I think the board members themselves can have um, a discussion uh, with vendors to look at what is in the budget, if additional funds are needed, and then to determine using what's called the business judgment rule, how to repair the worst sections of the roadway um, do you repair the whole roadway? Do you do repair the worst sections and do so on an as needed basis in the next five to 10 years? That's completely up to the board that you elect. Um, so my suggestion, I, I know it's critical and, and it needs to happen right away. My suggestion is to adopt the bylaws quickly um, to go through that process. Hopefully the, the board will then take effort and Ohio law requires them to take effort to repair and maintain the common elements, namely, in this case, the roadway. So um, you, you may be asking, can, <clears throat> can you do both at the same time? Um, I don't see any problem with that, except that I didn't want to throw too much on the community at once. I, I just wanted to get you established legally and then to have the board that's in place or using the same terminology, the trustee that's in place have the ability to move for litigation against any single owner that fails to meet their obligation as adopted. Because um, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about if someone fails to pay their proportionate share, then they run the risk of the association through its trustee getting a court order or a judgment against them plus reasonable attorney's fees. I have one quick question for that. So just to clarify for everybody, because we've always run on officers and two trustees separate. That was always my understanding. But are you saying that the officers, if we have three officers, let's say there's three of them, two of those can be a president and a trustee and the secretary and a trustee? Yeah, if your bylaw, if if the bylaws that you adopt provide for, see, it doesn't it doesn't give the, what we have recorded right now doesn't give a lot of uh, guidance on that. Let me read it just briefly. It says all owners of budding roadway easements will be required to pay a percentage of the costs of repairing and maintaining the roadway. That's pretty straightforward. 
Said percentage will be set out more particularly in each deed. A majority of the owners will decide when and what type of maintenance and repair is necessary. If repairs are necessary, they shall elect two of their members trustees. Said trustees shall contract to have said maintenance performed and shall collect each owner's share. Trustees may bring suit on behalf of the owner to collect any unpaid shares. Judgment may include court costs and attorney's fees expended in said collection. It's the last part that is confusing. Trustees are it, members that represent the association as a whole. It's exactly what your board does. There's no problem with the board, a board member being a trustee. There's no problem with the board appointing trustees as I, I use that term as a committee member. In some of my bigger communities, I'll give you an example, the board will appoint an ARB. So the ARB uh, decides and, and looks at improvement applications. And then they have the authority as delegated by the board to approve changes to someone's home, yard, fence, installation of a pool. I see it the same here. It could be the board members that act as your trustees or the board could appoint trustees. So that would be have to lay, be laid out in the bylaws. Yeah, and and if it's silent, I uh, as an attorney, I would say that the board themselves has the authority to act as the trustee. Okay. All right. It's just someone that has the authority to bring an action on behalf of the association. One last question. I'm sorry, I started to get emotional. I said I wasn't going to, but um, one last question on on uh, along those lines is that um, any recommendations if. Um, we've uh, determined that trustees would, you know, gather the bids and what happens if people run for trustees, but we get nobody to run for the, the uh, leadership positions. Okay. If, if no one runs and I've had that in other communities, then you're back in the same position of the potential need of a receiver. So then um, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, an example. I've got a small community, a condo association, not many members, most are retirees, and I've only got three board members. In the last election, I had three board members going off the board, three open seats. Only th there was two board members willing to serve again, and only one person ran. We didn't even have to have a vote. It's called by attrition because there was three open seats and three people said they were willing to do it. They were the elected board without even having a vote. If it would have been four people running for the three seats, we would have had a contested election, had a vote. So, but if you have absolutely no one willing to serve and you're back into the position of maybe having a, a, a receiver appointed to run the association. I only see that that would last maybe six months because people would not be happy with having to pay a receivership fees, their proportionate share of receivership fees. And this job isn't very hard. Uh, you, you just need three people to look over the assessments collected to pay out the reasonable cost of repairs, to have one single annual meeting and potentially an election of new board members, and that's it. So it's not, it's not like a, um, a condo association that has meetings every single month. A homeowners association can have just the annual meeting or quarterly meetings. So it's not gonna be a big burden on members of, of the community to run, and it'd be a lot cheaper to run, to self-govern. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, the next on the list is Mingus. Maddie, do you have any questions? We're good. Okay. Thank you. The next would be Monahan. Um, I have a couple of questions. Thank you. Um, thank you also, Kyle, for taking time out tonight to talk to us. Absolutely. Um, on the trustees. As they're appointed, um, do they have total say as to monies being spent on the roadway or does all of that come back to the board? Does yeah. it come to a vote, does it? I think it, it comes to a vote. So, so I think what happens is it's just a fact finding. Um, as I read what we have of record, okay. Um, when you say on record, you're proposed? Bylaws? No, the, the proposed bylaws is just to 
to basically establish rules as to our governing body. But when there's an expenditure of this size, so we have um, with the Butler County Recorder's Office, our, and, and um, Jeannie actually said item 13. So let's talk about the roadway. It says all owners butting the roadway easements will be required to pay a percentage of the cost, okay? It goes on and it says a majority of the owners will decide. So I think that the, the we need 51% vote to approve any recommendation of expenditure or maintenance. But I think the trustees should gather um, bids, should use the business judgment rule as to what best fits the community and propose that to the members. And then if 51% vote okay. and approve that, then that action can be taken. So if I, if I mix that up or wasn't clear about that earlier, my apologies. Yeah, I didn't see that on number 13 on the documents that I have. So I might not have what you're reading. So that's okay. fine. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I think that, that the members, I think it's such an expenditure. It's probably the biggest expenditure within the community. I think that power rests with approval of the members themselves. Okay. 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 So from what I'm hearing from you, you're recommending number one, get together, do our bylaws, and yeah. make sure that we get the agreement on the bylaws. After the bylaws or at this after the bylaws are established, then you're recommending that we go to officers. Yep. Okay. And then at that point, or at the point of the bylaws, um, do you take that in the covenants the same time have them recorded in Butler County? So the covenants are already of record. Okay. You just need to record the bylaws. And okay. uh, on the very first page, it will cross reference back to the our covenants. But the important part and why I say that is for that second section of 13 that's already established. Okay. We need a trustee, whether it be a board member or someone appointed, to have the power to enforce an assessment. So if, if it was determined that every home needed to pay a special assessment, their proportionate share, say $750, from time to time, you may have a few people unwilling to do that. Okay. Well, you need to have the legal authority to enforce that. Usually that's done by way of what's called a lien. Right. And then if need be, court action to either foreclose the lien or to gain judgment and garnish wages. There's other, other ways to enforce it. Um, but when I read that section and it said that the trustees could bring a suit and enforce right, on behalf of all the members, where where I started struggling is I knew we didn't have recorded bylaws. So I thought then, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? I want to establish our association so it has full power, then take the second step. It, you know, whatever bid that was already received on the roadway, go back to that vendor and say, is this bid still good or does it need to be modified? If it's modified, propose that to the whole community and have a vote if a majority, 50% plus one vote, uh, votes in favor, then that action is carried in. And then a special assessment um, or an expenditure of the reserve funds, I, I don't know how much we have, would then take place and it would be repaired. That's that's the methodology of, of where I think you go from here. Because um, the biggest yeah. problem we have is, you know, I, 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 this is a rhetorical question, you know, the president that's been serving as a president, how long has he been president, he or she, and when does his term end? We don't know. We, we don't have recorded bylaws that establish the rules regarding our governing body. The bylaws themselves will not have any effect on rules, regulations of the community, you know, uh, of, of the homes in and of themselves. An example, Mysteriously, in the bylaws, I, it would be improper for me to put, hey, you can't park your RV or your boat in your driveway. That goes with the declaration. That doesn't go with the bylaws. The bylaws is just how oh. we elect and run the association uh, board of managers. That's it. Okay. So early on, I heard you say that you really didn't think that you had the power to take it to suit to... Um, continue with the existing bid that we had last year. Right, yeah. But you're yeah. saying that if they come back and revise that, they can bring that new revision back to the members for it. 
Yeah, so so I didn't want to get us in a situation where <clears throat> say that we record the bylaws and then we immediately try to enforce the old vote right. and an attorney on the other side or maybe a, a unit owner that wanted to fight this would say, well, that vote was taken without right. the recorded bylaws. It's really ineffective. So I was just thinking to clean everything up, get the bylaws recorded, get a board established take a new vote and start fresh. And it takes okay. all the question out of that. So that's like three steps, do the bylaws, get your members in yep. and put it working on the right way. Yes, ma'am, 100%. Okay. Oh, good. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so next is uh, Ray Schulte. Do you see your little mute? mute? Yeah. Can you oh, hear us now? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. All questions have been answered. Thank you. Say that again, Barb. I'm sorry. All questions have been answered. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next is Schmitz, Larry Schmitz. screen here. We'll come back around, Larry, if you have questions. Um, next is Schuster. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I don't know if Adam's on here or not. We just came from a baseball game. Um, I'm curious, um, for the members that don't want to pay for the road, or can't pay for the road, why would they have a vested interest to vote for the bylaws? Um, because they don't want to fix the road anyway. Because if, first if they don't vote for the bylaws, then any single owner could move for a receivership, could enforce or, 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 or institute their own will as to what they think the, the cost to repair the roadway would be. They would decide solely. And on top of repairing the roadway anyway, because that's exactly what should happen under the, the covenants, you would have to pay the receivership fees. So in my mind, no matter what, the roadway is gonna be repaired, but is it determined by the members and by a board duly elected, or is it determined by a receiver? So I think the threat is if, if enough members don't come forward and establish the bylaws and run the association according to law, then it's receivership time. And then all, all members have to pay the receivership fees. So that, that would be the response. Okay. okay, so you, I mean, so the receivership, um, the receiver, if I guess that's kind of like in a way, in a roundabout way, bringing about a quote lawsuit against the road, the lane. Yep. So, so think okay. of, in layman's terms, say that uh, I, Kyle Rapier, am an owner. I, I own a home, okay, and I'm right in the middle. So the roadway, the roadway helps me, you know, about fifty percent. I'm not at the end. I, I don't even know how it really lays out, to be honest with you. I could file, and I could sue every other member, and I could indicate that the association is not being run according to Ohio Revised Code, that the common elements, the roadway is not being repaired as what's required by the recorded covenants. We don't have a, a validly established board, nor do we have bylaws. Therefore, I'm asking the court to appoint a receivership and take control of the association. That's what the lawsuit will say in legalese, but what it means in layman's terms. And then once the court a, uh, appoints a receiver uh, in suing all of the members, all, all of the owners, <clears throat> the court typically attributes all of the cost equally to everyone that, that received the benefit of the receivership. Um, so yeah, it looks like a lawsuit, 
but then we lose lose control. I got to be honest with you. Then the receiver is in control until the court says otherwise. Right. Okay. And I'm wondering, do the bylaws state on when a vote is needed for certain monetary amounts? No. Um, so I think that the declaration and and I don't want to get too too technical with you, but there's a hierarchy of what controls our covenant. What's of record right now? Our covenants and restrictions control over top of the bylaws. And I think as to the roadway issue alone, that takes a vote of the community. Okay. Right. I'm just wondering on other, um, like I'm just giving a, uh, an example, like um, we want to purchase um, something for up at the top of the lane, a new sign. And okay. it's over $500. Wouldn't we have to vote as a community on whether we pass, whether we want that new sign. No, uh, that's typically entrusted into your board unless stated otherwise. I think the roadway, I'm just looking quickly. The roadway mm -hmm. is the only section where I see that it takes a majority of the owners. Um, but in a typical situation, you elect a board, the board adopts an annual budget and then they run the association according to that budget. If you have bylaws, it's typically not in the bylaws, but in, if you have declarations that limit the power of the board to spend a certain amount of money, then it goes to a vote of the members to go over top of that. But in your example, if we adopted bylaws and it was silent, the, the board has that authority by statute and that's that 5312 that I was talking about. They, they could expend funds as they vote according to a majority of the board. So mm, even if it's thousands of dollars. Um, I'm just asking, I was on the PTC for yeah. president for <clears throat> the school and anything over $500, of course, the parents had to vote on it and pass it. Yeah, and so, that's a lot of money, you know. That's a broad question. My answer is no, though. Um, okay. So, so let, let's take it back. I don't, I don't know how much money we have into a reserve account, but typically they only have the authority as to the amount of money that they take in in an annual year, plus they can spend some of the reserves. If it was thousands of dollars, they would have to pass a special assessment. And I think that would take a, a majority of the owners to approve a special assessment. Does okay. that make sense? So, yeah. yeah. So, so no, but I think whatever the annual fees are plus the reserve budget, they have discretion over that. If it's, if it's gonna be a special assessment, vote of the, the community. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. Sure. Okay, Larry, you're back or you want, do you have a question? I'm back. Um, yes, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, so a while ago we had, uh, well, we have, uh, some members that, that didn't pay their dues and the former president who was also an attorney um, took this to court. So I'm trying to figure out how this even went to court if what you're saying, there's nothing been recorded. So, how so, so um, he could probably bring a court action, but if it was default, meaning no one defended on the other side, then the court, the court, is not the gatekeeper. They don't look for every legal defense. They're there, just there as an umpire. So if he got, if, if either the homeowners that weren't paying and he brought litigation, if they just paid, then the lawsuit was settled that way. If they didn't show up and he got a default judgment, it was settled that way. Or if they hired an attorney that didn't wage the same defense that I'm, I'm afraid of, which is, hey, you don't have the authority to bring this litigation because you have recorded bylaws. You can bring a lawsuit and that not come to light is what I'm, I'm saying, okay? So I don't know exactly what situation, but anyone could file litigation or a lawsuit at any time. But my fear would be if I filed litigation to enforce the prior vote and, and an owner comes in and defends that and tries to shut us down, I see a viable method for them to do that because I'm, I'm reading right in the statute. We don't have recorded bylaws, therefore we lack the authority to litigate. So the other question I have, it sounds like we are 
kind of sort of starting back over again with um, with the legalities. Do the current um, statutes that we live by as far as the campers, the dumpster, et cetera, et cetera, are those all going to have to be reintroduced and re-voted back in again? Or are those recorded? A little more information is that what, what do you mean? Are there restrictions regarding dumpsters and, and things? There, there, there's, I guess we could call them bylaws that we would live by as far as the camper, the dumpster, the um, fencing out front, um, so many animals on your property. Um, were, were those instituted by a board or were the, or those of the, what's recorded with the Butler County Recorder's Office? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I, I understand what you're saying. It, was I've it been like, a rule, like a rule that was implemented by the, the prior board? No, I'm just talking I've about been... the rules and covenants. Okay. No. Uh, okay. So if we're talking about, and, and what I'm looking at, what's recorded uh, back in 1988, it says volume 1640, page 707. Those are locked in. Th those are of record. Um, we don't have to start over. Th those still stand. But we need the bylaws to, to have a governing body that has legal authority to enforce them. So what I'm saying is, let me, let me paint a bad picture. I don't know if this is true. And so, so please don't take anything out of context that I'm saying as an example. Let's say that we had three board members, we currently have three board members and, and they just claim to be the board. They never have elections. They never give up power. That's the problem that we have. We don't have a set of rules as to when those board members are up for election, how we notice a, a vote, how we um, uh, provide for electronic voting as, as may be, that's a new thing that we should all provide for because many of us obviously have computers. Um, what I'm simply stating is we need the set of rules as to who the board is. And therefore, once we have that and we establish the board, then the board has the power to enforce our already recorded rules, covenants and restrictions. Okay. So we don't have to start over from scratch though. Those are going to run with with your properties into perpetuity or unless a super majority of the the members come and they amended those covenants and restrictions they run forever so my last question is regarding the <clears throat> the uh establishing the rules and then voting in i guess trustees and a president etc why wouldn't we want to get the officials in place first and then now you have someone that can govern this and, and take charge of this and then vote in the bylaws or whatever else needs to be done. Why couldn't you do it the other way? What's Because we don't have any rules on how you even put them in. So, so the members have to vote on how to even establish and, and what positions we have. Who's to say it's five members versus three? The board. So we can't really put a board in effect. What I was suggesting was, I, and, and I, I, I don't really know what had happened, but I think that there was a board and that board just no longer existed or went away. So I was suggesting to Lisa, as well as uh, other members that come to me, you don't really have the power, but your members, um, you are a de facto group that are just trying to organize and bring the community together to vote on bylaws. And once the members through majority vote establish their bylaws, then you hold the election of who the board is. If we were to do it in reverse, I can't tell you how many members we're electing or appointing or, or what we would do. Is it five, is it seven, is it three? So, so I, I just wanted to establish the rules. If it was gonna be a three member board, they each would serve for one one year, and that's fine, or two years, and uh, and then have a vote of who wants to run for the board. And if there's more, if if we're our bylaws say that it's three members, but only three members run, or say that they're willing to serve, you don't have to take an official vote. But that's an that's an official act of the membership through attrition that those three members are your board. You have four people run for three spots. We're going to take a vote, and the top three vote getters are your board. Okay. 
Okay. Next up is uh, Shoemate. Hi, Lisa. This is Tom. Hey there. Kyle, thank you so much for coming on tonight mm -hmm. and uh, explaining these issues. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware. I actually used to be in part of the government back here till I resigned. And I did have the opportunity to actually look through 5312. Also, talk to two homeowner um, management companies. Uh, was able to get legal advice from from two of them, and you seem like you're pretty uh, right on what they were pretty much telling me as well. Okay. So the only uh, concern I have at this point is is right now we have two elected officials. One is a trustee. One is our treasurer. So there seems to be some confusion back here. When you talk about the de facto government, there seems to be some people that feel that the when I was president and I resigned, that just like the 25th Amendment of the United States, that the vice president would move into my position and that the treasurer would move into the vice position and we would look for a new official. You're you're 100 right on that. So when you um, talk about when you talk about the effect, though, that's how I feel that our government should have went back here. Yeah. However, it did not go that way. Yeah. Uh, the trustee had been, I don't want to say overlooked, but um, basically wasn't given the time given the time to organize what he wanted to do with the lane, so he was just kind of pushed to the side. Okay. So with so, that said, with that said, the only question I have is how can we move forward and how do we recognize, okay, do we need to pick one trustee or do we need to pick two trustees? Okay. Because those two trustees and the treasurer as elected officials can make up our board. And I know there's at least four people back here that would apply for the new trustee position. All four people are extremely competent. All four people, you could not have a bad one out of the four people I know they're gonna run. So how do we clarify, do we need one trustee or two? And if we only need one, how can we get a clean election, get this over with, move on and get the bylaws done? Okay, I think the bylaws have to come first because you're, how, how are you saying that people were elected? There, there was an official vote of the community and they've elected a board member? Yes, I can send okay. you the paperwork on it. Okay, so so what, how long is that person that was elected, how long is that person's term? It's been since 2018 and basically since it's always been voluntary, there is no term limit. And that, and that's what the law has a problem with. So, so what I'm saying is the community, regardless if it's de facto board, and I use that term because I had thought that the, the people that were running it, even if they called themselves board members, no longer were willing to serve. So then other members come and it's just an organizational thing. They have no power. My, my purpose would be have the members call a meeting because the Ohio Revised Code gives us that authority. Have the membership themselves call a meeting for the purpose of establishing the bylaws. If it's a two year, one year, doesn't matter. If the members that were serving as board members previously want to be reelected or want to call it run for for the board, then they, they would just either give notice or you know we, we take what's called nominations from the floor. Hey, I, I wanna run, I wanna be a board member. My, my thought and the, the simplest thing is to have established rules of how the board is elected and have that voted on and approved by the membership of the community and then have an election. 
And, and if it's three positions and six people run, I would be elated as an attorney because we typically in association, homeowners especially, homeowner associations, we typically have trouble finding people willing to serve. Nothing wrong with contested election, that'd be great. And the top three vote getters, that's gonna be your board. To, to pick up where you were before, I think is just messy. Um, yeah. I think you just adopt your bylaws, have a vote, establish your board, and then let your board pick up, kind of let the past be the past. Um, have, have some vendors. It's, it's spring. We're going right into the prime season for, for black topping. Have some vendors submit some bids. Then the board bring that through another meeting and vote of the community as a proposal. And the membership can vote it up or down but it takes a majority of the membership to approve an expenditure, I think. Does that answer your question? I, I wanna go back and say one more thing. Um, say, say that we had bylaws and we had um, a four member board and you were talking about that the pre if the president was to resign, the vice president would move up. Um, typically our bylaws indicate what procedure. And yeah, I agree with you. Usually the vice president moves up or, or the remaining members would reestablish what positions and then they would, through vote, they would appoint someone for the unexpired term of the president that resigned. Um, I have members resign all the time and that's okay. What happens is until the next vote can be taken, the remaining members appoint someone in the community that is willing to serve. Um, and then at the next regularly scheduled election, that, that seat position is open. And if the person that was appointed wants to run for it, he runs for it, he or she runs for it, as well as anyone else that's interested in it. But my, my recommendation is going to be to, for the members uh, to adopt the bylaws. Otherwise you're, you're in risk of the receivership um, territory that I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, I think everybody would agree the receivership route would be uh let's face it, it's, it's a hostile takeover, it's a coup. So as the neighborhood and a community of people that I really care about, I'd hate to see it come to that, especially when we have so many people, you know, now that are willing to step up. Absolutely, yeah. So the receivership is you know, a nuclear option. That's the, in an association, condo or homeowner, that's a last resort. So I guess the only comment I have is, and the only way we don't see eye to eye is, I think the three new people that are elected to the board would be the ones that would initiate the bylaws and go for the vote from the community for the bylaws. So that's the only thing I guess we don't see eye to eye on. I think everything you've said today is fantastic. I just think that the constitution, the US constitution was probably written with government officials in place um, and I think that's, that's what should happen here as well. The U S constitution was written by rebels. Um, I, I, that's just a history lesson. I mean, uh, I won't get down in the mud, but they were treasonous rebels. If you viewed it from the, uh, government that was in place, which was England. Yeah. But, we're not, we're not in great Britain right now. Exactly. So we took over and, uh, then those members were elected, um, as our governing officials. The same effect can be met if the prior board members are willing to just organize a vote, that's the same effect. It's a vote of the bylaws um, of the community. The, the power resides in the community. Doesn't matter if it's a de facto board or if it's the prior board organizing and establishing a vote and uh, uh, sending notice to every member. That's what's important. Every single member gets notice of when the vote is. And then uh, providing some proxy ballots. Um, that comes from Robert's rules. If we don't have established uh, rules, then you can vote by proxy or you can assign your vote to other members. Because you know our schedule, no matter what date we pick, somebody's gonna have a conflict, but they may still want their voice heard. So I, I don't mind if it's the prior board, if they're the ones organizing or uh, any single member, the important part is we establish a date, a time and a procedure to vote the bylaws. 
and establish uh, and, and treat that as an annual meeting and then establish an ongoing history of that's when the annual meeting. April and May are great times to have annual meetings. I've got a lot scheduled. So um, I, I really, I'm, I'm not gonna say I disagree with you. It's, it's, it doesn't matter who sets it. I think it's just important that it's set and we establish some bylaws to govern ourselves from this point forward. Well, Kyle, I appreciate your time and I don't want to take any more of it up because I know there's, you know, other people here that, that need to ask you questions. So again, thank you uh, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, uh, next it looks like, uh, is that John Van Hook? I see a John on here, but I don't know if that's uh Crawford or if that's Van Hook, I can't tell who that is. Okay, um, and this other person, your tagline looks like it's RRMY. I don't know who that is. No questions. Okay, thanks, hey, Ron. I know I know who it is. <laughs> okay, Arabeth, I saw that you jumped on. Um, would, do you have any questions? You're on mute. You're on mute. I'll just listen to the recorded session and then go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. We um. Does it's. Is anybody else that didn't get to ask a question? Is there anybody else that has uh, something else they'd like to say, Gentry? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't figure out my mute before. That's okay. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, one of my questions is. Let's say we somehow, or we, we figure out how to cover the cost of this road, we get the road corrected and we're up to date. Is it possible to eliminate the HOA and have the township take over and, and we live by the township laws? The answer is yeah. So um, Ohio Revised Code provides if it takes a very, very super majority. If, if your documents are silent, as to terminating an HOA or terminating an association covenants and restrictions, then it takes a super majority. Um, it's either 85% or 100%. Every case is different. But if everyone agreed is the safe bet and uh, the, the bigger part, the harder part is getting uh, the road dedicated, um, the legal answer is yes, but it's very difficult, okay? Okay. Dedicated roads are great, and, and I prefer those in a community um, because then it's either, you know, the municipality, a township, as it be, or the city, and, and it's beneficial because they do the snow plowing, they do, you know, the salting and the treating, they do the repair and the maintenance. Now, you may pay a little more on your tax bill, but um, you've got a big governing body that, that does it the right way. Um, but that your covenants and restrictions, there, it's not just the roadway. There's other, I would call, call them protections um, that presumably when you have covenants and restrictions, it protects property values. That way it's not a free for all. Um, but to go back and answer your question, uh, there are legal methods to, uh, to terminate an HOA and to uh, dedicate a road way to a township or municipality, yes. Hey, Rob, I have a question for you. So yeah. if, we, if we did that, so are we then responsible? Would we have to bring the road up to code by, by township standards before they would dedicate it? How does that work? You're, you're asking me? Oh, I don't know. You brought the question up. I thought you do. Well, hey, no. Hey, Lisa, I, this is, this no, is Tom. Wait. We did look at that. We talked to Morgan Township. Yeah. We would have to bring the road up to DOT standards okay. and have it in, inspected and approved before we, could, before we could be incorporated. You are mm -hmm. correct. Okay, thanks. So it's just something maybe to revisit after we first address the problem of the road. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, do you have any other questions, Rob? I don't think so. I got in late because of the soccer going on tonight, so I'll have to watch them. <laughs> yep, those three girls will keep you busy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's circle back around. Is there anybody else that has any further questions? Hmm? Hey, Lisa, it's Adam Schoester. How you doing? 
Hi, fine. Yeah, hey, I got a question, and this might have already been asked. I got uh, here late, about halfway through. Um, so, in the opinion, I think it's Kyle, right? Yes. In your opinion, uh, what, if any, do you see as downsides to having the bylaws? Um, right now, because we have covenants restrictions that I think that we need to have some governing body be able to enforce, I don't see any downside. Um, the only thing the bylaws will do is just establish standards as to electing board members and how many we have. Um, now, one downside, you know, just piggybacking off the prior question is if we just spent a lot of time, effort, and money adopting the bylaws and then the road was dedicated to the township and the association was done away with, I, I think the downside would be doing it for no reason. Uh, those are very, very rare cases where an association or covenants and restrictions go away. So I, I think that there are no downsides to adopting how, how we run the association board. Um, it's needed, you know. And, and you, everyone, the members establish your, your rules. As long as they're reasonable, you can determine your rules. It could be a three-year term. It could be a five-year, or I'm sorry, a five-person or seven-person board. It's up to you. Association your size, I think three, and I think two-year terms are what's average that I see. Okay, thanks. Huh? Okay, another shout out. Just a quick question on, since we've never really had bylaws, actually anyone that has been elected over the last 20, 25, 30 years is really not even beneficial. Would, would that be accurate? Yeah, but it's not, I, I don't find fault in it because the statute's fairly new, 2010, and, and your bylaw, your covenants and restrictions were back in 88, and there was no law on establishing HOAs and bylaw requirements. So, so what had happened was attorneys were just drafting what they saw fit. Um, I'm not gonna say anything was done illegal. It's just from this point forward, from the point of 2010, when the HOA statute was uh, adopt, amended, adopted and effectuated, um, attorneys like myself, anyone in the state of Ohio, we go to continuing legal education seminars and we're told to try to bring all older associations into compliance with Ohio law. So I don't fault any of the prior board or how the elections were run at all. I just think that, you know, um, since I know about 5312 and what the requirements are, I'm just trying to bring you guys into compliance. And I'll give you an example. Some, some of my associations did not record their bylaws, but they had bylaws. They had rules on how the board was elected. Maybe, maybe your um, community had bylaws, but they were lost somewhere along the way and board members were just running it according to what was done prior. I don't know. And, and, and that's the, the whole issue is, I think the easiest thing since the technology that we have today and the ease of, of uh, recording electronically, I, my office can record them electronically. We just establish some rules, establish our bylaws and record them of record. And then they're out there forever in, until the association members wish to change them. Okay, great. Yeah, I just think I agree. I, I think it's good to start fresh and yes, and I want to re I want to recap yeah. that actually before we uh, let Kyle go here because we're over our time limit here. We're over our time yeah. and I just want to recap for everybody to understand. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but so first we need to meet, decide what our bylaws are going to be and adopt those bylaws. Then we need to have, hold an election, an all new election for all new members, regardless of what their you know, status was if they were a, a board member or trustee before we need a new fresh start. They can run and put their name out there, but we need to have a just a clean vote and then um, start moving along on running our association with that board and trustees yeah. and getting the road done. I, I'm suggesting that uh, everybody have a copy, be presented with a copy, and then to have a meeting for questions and answers okay. and comments, and that whatever the majority prefers, that's, that's what 
these are rewritten. You know, if the majority seems at, at, at just a, a straw, you know, a, a meeting of the members for question and answers, if it seems like a majority of the room wants three, five members instead of three, you change it to five because right. <clears throat> rather, than, rather have the whole community involved in, in uh, drafting what's being proposed than just a single member you know, this is most of this has just come, come from my computer and it, it may not work for your community. So I like having the question and answer session first, getting a working draft and then proposing that working draft rather than just saying, hey, here's what we're proposing and you don't get to comment on it. You can just vote it up or down. So right. that's we why did, we did that. Jeannie you actually already did. did. Yeah, well, Jeannie sent out a document that allowed everybody to um, make changes and return them and only two people did that. So I see. So, so you may have already done that first requirement that I like to do. So you could simply just set a meeting to vote to affirmably adopt or, or reject the proposed bylaws. We can do that again. We'll, we can send it out one more time. It's not that hard to do. We'll, you know. Um, I just like to have the community involved in, in drafting what's being proposed. But we so, uh, so you might do that one more time and then, okay. then set um, an official meeting um, whether it's through the, the board that, that's previously, if they want to send the notice, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, just, it's just effectuating the will of all of the community um, to get some rules established. That's, that's the main goal. And as long as good faith has done that, most, most judges, if it was ever argued, would, would find that it had been done proper. As right. long as you notify every single member and give everybody an opportunity to vote. Absolutely. I think we've met those requirements. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for your time and your extra time as, as far as that goes. That's so okay. um, I think we are going to you know, move along with discussions and hope that um, we can all um, come together um, as a community and decide what we need to do moving forward and, and get things going. Okay. Everyone have a good night. Thank you for the invite and uh, the opportunity to speak to you. I'm going to leave the meeting and okay. good luck to you. Uh -huh. Thank you guys. Thank you. Everybody's Thank you. more than welcome. If you want to have further discussion, unmute yourselves and it's. So for me, it's just cost. Was that discussed? Uh, he said, right yeah, he said it would be about, uh, $200, depending on how difficult we made it for him. If we decided on bylaws and they were ready to go, it would be about $200 for him to record them with the county. Okay. And did he discuss if we wanted to change bylaws or covenants? How is that there charges to that or if once they're already stated? Once, once they're stated, there probably is a recording fee, but he said it was $34 for the first two pages, I think it was, and then $8 for additional pages, and ours are only $6 or six pages long. So if next year, so let's say we adopted these bylaws, and somebody correct me if I heard wrong, but then if we wanted to make a change and they needed to be re refiled, there's a fee for, for that, a minimal fee. Okay. So the only, go ahead, Jeannie. Go no, ahead. you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say the only rule in the new bylaws is that you can't vote if you're not up to date on your fees. Is that correct when I read it the bylaws? Is, but it is, but I took another look at that. I knew some people had issues and I've talked to some different people and, you know, maybe we could put something in there that says you can't vote if it's after 90 days. Let's say after 90 days, you're still not paid. Does that seem fair? Right. And did it change the date they were due? Did it give a new date? I'm, I thought I saw somewhere it said June, but I don't know. No, and actually that's probably, that's a good point actually, but that probably should be in there, but that's why Jeannie sent those, the bylaws out. And I think we need to do that again, because if there's interest, you know, now we want to do this and people really want to take a look at them, you know, we're not deciding that. And we said that from the beginning, Everybody needs to give their input. I think this, or I think that, and then then every, it, it morphs into something that everybody can live with. That's the idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just wanted to reiterate that, that um, as far as I'm concerned and just basing on what Kyle said that the current ballot that we have, we just need to start over with then. And um, 
we do have some um, suggested changes. So we could put those out. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing. If you have comments, comment. Um, let us know. And then I would say here within the next, what, anybody have any sense of time on that? A week? Does that give enough time? It seems like it should. I'd say two weeks to let everybody think through it. That's just okay. me. Because that, that was a lot of information. And then that way people can take time and, and maybe pull up the 5312, because I've looked through it as well. And just understand, because depending on, you know, there's so many versions out there just to understand it, everything that we're talking through. I just think two weeks. And the one other thing I want to comment, I, did he not say that we still have to have a president or we do not have to have a president? Mm -hmm. The what? You do not have to have a president. Oh, I didn't catch that, Jeannie. I'm sorry. I didn't catch what he said about that. I thought, I that, thought we he said we still had to have a president. I know the trustees were discussed, but I thought he said we still have to have a president. My understanding was that you would have a you know, at least a three member board and then those three board members would decide what their positions were going to be. Okay. That's, that's it. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Members, All right. right. Well, along those lines for the collective group at a certain point in time, I mean, we're going to suggest, I think, uh, I'm guessing that the bylaws still consist of a, a board of three with uh, two elected trustees uh, or one or whatever the, that number ends up being um, for the roadway. But there's a very real possibility that if, unless people step up, then we could have issues. So I'll just say to those who are considering being a trustee, consider being on the board and, and I'll leave it at that. Running for the board that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any other comments or is there something you'd like to share? Do you have any information that you can share with the group or? Going once, going twice, done. All right, thank you so much everybody for participating. Hey, thank you. Hope you have a great rest of the week and I hope I see you out and about. All right, thank bye. you. All right guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.